Oh, five, four, three, two, one. Good morning. Good morning. Buenos dias. Good morning. It is Thursday night for us, Friday morning for you guys. We just got back from the Merced Bible study. Yes, Alejandro's <clears throat> mommy. Well, it's late. A little bit. A little yeah. bit. A little bit. We drove all the way from Merced, and it's late. You know, there's so many reasons. I'm just thinking about this real quick before we go into the subject. I'm so excited that God set me free. I'm so, I'm so glad, glad Jesus, Jesus set, set me free. free. So. I'm so glad <clears throat> Jesus set me free. The whole thing. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Remember, it would go into the devil that. had me bound, but Jesus set me free. I remember that. Death My mom probably bound, remembers. But Jesus set me free. Yeah. So, I'm so glad because, like, um, this is kind of way off subject, you know, but I'm so glad he set me free from having to act like I'm a street guy. Let me make, I know you're, you're like, what are you talking about? You know, because I was watching a video right now, scrolling through real quick before we did this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this is what I mean. I don't know what it is about um, people that were gangsters or people that were rappers. They feel like they got to put this persona on when the camera goes on. Mm -hmm. Like, they'll be normal like this. The camera goes on. They'll be like, hey, what's up, man? This is house arrest. We're out here doing this. You know, like that whole thing. I'm so glad Jesus set you free. Today. Yes. Thank or, you, Jesus. So that's what that's what rappers do. But gangsters, I'm so glad I'm set free from that. Because it's weird because they're Christian, yet they still got to feel like like they got to come off hard on video. Yeah. yeah. You know? And I can't even do it. I can't even fake it, guys. We just, I'm just glad I'm set free from that. Because, you know, like I was the guy raising my kids that I thought I was so cool and so bad that I couldn't joke and run around the park with my kids. You know, like I had to be the dude, you know, I was all, you know, all ironed up and I was all stuff, ironed right? up and, <laughs> you know, God forbid I get my shoes dusty. And you, do you realize what I would do to go back to push my kids on a swing and be silly and, and, and just do dumb things. And now they're grown. You can't do that. You know, I can, but They'd look weird <laughs> with my 30-year-old daughter, you know. She, grown up sweet. she would probably love, actually, Deanna would probably love that. <laughs> you know, and, and I trip out when people are set free in Christ. But they feel they still got to dress the part, look the part, talk all crazy like the, you know what I mean? Like, just What's shut up? up. What's up, S.A.? Like, Christ has set you free, <laughs> you know, and, and like. I don't know. I, I just, I enjoy life and I can just be me and I don't have to be any certain way. I don't have to nothing. You know what I mean? I'm just free in Christ. Anyways, that's not even the subject we're talking about. Just something I scrolled through right now and made me think about that. But we had a great Bible study in Merced. Yeah. You know, when they do their Bible study, I get to, um, I go sit with the kids and I do like my own little Bible study with them. <laughs> yeah. I always take, you know, I always print up like a little, um, like a little lesson with them and then like a little activity sheet for them and then a little like, um, like a little craft or something. And today they were supposed to learn a scripture. From and last week. From last week. And I took some little, um, some little treats for them to earn. And I get there, I was all excited. I was like, oh my God, I got to go buy some treats, you know, for them. So that I bought treats and none of them learned it. I was like, mm -mm -mm. come on, guys. Mm -mm. So I kind of did it over with them at the beginning. And I gave them like 10 minutes or so for them to relearn it and learn it. And, and they memorized it right then and there. And yeah. they did. So I kind of gave them their treat anyways. So I, now they take you serious when you say you have a treat for them if they yeah, learn something. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, it was really cool, though. Today they worked <clears throat> on um, doing little testimony, my testimony books. Oh, is that what she was mm -hmm. showing? Oh, mm -hmm. okay. 
So what they did is they did a book and they started and said my testimony and they get to on each page as they go, they're drawing out their testimony. Mm. So that's what they're doing. So they started it and they get to continue that's to do cool. it throughout the throughout the week. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So it's exciting, guys. Um, mm -hmm. But you're you're doing identity. Yeah, we're with them. we're doing identity. We're in the third week of it. Um, I love teaching it when people are just like poof, yeah. mind blown. Yeah. And I love that moment, man, because it's 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 a freedom moment. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, if you go to our playlist, we have a playlist called "Who Are You." Um, identity seminar something like yeah. that who i think it's who identity? are you yeah. and um i actually posted when i did this teaching on a zoom um call and uh guys if you haven't watched that please 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 it'll it'll change your life so that's what i'm teaching in merced right now we're in a third week we have three more weeks of it and i'm i'm really excited i i it's a real small group so they could take their time and just mm -hmm. soak it in, mm -hmm. you know, which is awesome. Because I've taught this in groups, big groups, you know, somewhat big groups. Yeah. And it's different when it's intimate and people can ask the questions. I can actually see the faces like the light turns on. Yeah. You know. And, of course, we get hosted by beautiful Vanessa and, and Randy. And she's, man, she just goes out and just... Um, above and beyond. Above and beyond, you know, which is just beautiful, you know. Guys, I talk about... You guys know how big I am in presentation and and just, you know... And just all of that. Um, and always giving your best and everything. And, and this beautiful sister always does her best and gives her best. And every time we get there, she always just goes above and beyond and always mm -hmm. has... Um, a beautiful setup, you know, with with refreshments and and just fruit and, and little platters and everything, you know. And it's it's not something she has to do. It's not something we do yeah. for Bible studies and everything. But she always goes above and beyond, and and um, and we're just blessed, you know, to to have her, you know, and and just what she does, and we're so grateful, yeah. you know, to. That, that she is that type of person and just thank you and Vanessa if you're watching thank you for for doing that mm -hmm. for always going above and beyond and for just um giving you know your brothers and sisters you know God's best um because it's it's just beautiful when we give Jesus our best in everything that we do yeah yeah um we did see uh sister Grace yes we did and Ricardo's wife and yes, we, we saw did. her real quick for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was nice to see her. Yeah. And we met her son. Yes, her youngest absolutely son. her baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's 16 years old, you know. Now he's getting there. He's a teenager, you know. Yeah, she... Wonderful, he's gorgeous. She had uh, children prior to Ricardo. Mm -hmm. And um, so every weekend she comes to church, uh, the kids are always with their dad. So mm -hmm. we never get to meet her kids. Yeah, and, today and he we, was the one that was closest to Ricardo, though. Yeah, so we yeah. got to meet him. He came out real quick, said hello. And yeah. He looked a little shy. You know, but, <laughs> yeah, and um, then we've seen Tony and the kids, mm -hmm. which was wonderful to see Tony and the kids. Yeah, and when, it's always beautiful took to see Took them from Taco them. Bell. Those yeah. kids, man, every time we walk in there, we bring them food, and they get all happy. <laughs> You know, Josh, he's like, I said, what are you doing sitting here? There's food over there. He's what? And he took off. <laughs> yeah. I love, so, I love the kids. Yeah. But um, here we are. And um, with a question somebody asked. Yes, all the way from. Uh, Netherlands? Uh, I believe it's Switzerland. Yeah, I believe she's all the way from Switzerland. Yeah? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. So she asked the question because she wanted to ask, you know how we do the Q&A uh, sometimes in Bible study, but I mean, seven o'clock uh, for us, Switzerland is way off, so there's no way she could really be there for the live. Mm -hmm. So she, she sent you a question and we figured, I don't know if she'll watch it, or you can send the link. Yeah, you, absolutely. And we're going to address the question she asked. Mm -hmm. So you're going to read it? And no, you go ahead. Yeah? Yeah, because you can maybe put it in a different okay. way. So this is, she wrote it to Sharon, though. But she goes, Dear Sister Sharon, I need your advice. 
I struggle a bit with the subject of illness. I know that you were also ill a time ago. Could you look at this topic biblically? There are Christians who say that Jesus carried sickness, and if you get sick, that you were too little obedient, or lived too much in the flesh, or even have too little faith. Has God ever revealed anything to you in this regard? So basically, this person is saying uh, on sickness, um, that if you do get sick as a Christian, that you're either not obedient, or you're in the flesh, or you have little faith. Or have too little faith, yeah. Yeah. Um, good question. Yeah, very good. And um, it's not a complicated answer, actually. Um, I'll start off with this, is the fact that, first of all, we live in a fallen world. Yes, we do. We live in a fallen world, in a world where Christians and non-Christians get in car wrecks. Christians and non-Christians get cancer. Christians and non-Christians die of COVID. Christians and non-Christians get their houses burned down while they're in it, you know? So this is a fallen world. If this were not a fallen world, there would be no need for heaven, no need for anything else, because this would be paradise. So we need to start off with that as a foundation. Absolutely. So biblically speaking, um, our job, it's funny because I just talked about this today. Our job is to lay hands on the sick. The Bible says lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Here's the thing though. The second part, you or I can't make anyone recover. Yeah. We got to do our part. Lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. So we can lay our hands on the sick, but only God can make recover. We don't know the big picture of things. We don't know the span of things. You know, matter of fact, it is not for us. It's none of our business, actually, to be honest with you. Our job is to lay hands on the sick. Simple. If a doctor gives a bad report after we pray for somebody, we still lay our hands on the sick. Because until the birth person breathes their last, we are going to stand in faith. Mm -hmm. But here's, here's, this, this, this is where it gets ugly. Is for some reason, there's Christians that feel they need to justify, like if you go pray for somebody and they still die or they still stay sick. God forbid somebody thinks that we're bad Christians. So we say, oh, it's because that person was in the flesh. We're justifying ourselves or, oh, you didn't get healed because uh, you, you must be in disobedience. You know, and the thing is, is that, you know, regardless of what the outcome is, my faith never falters. My faith still stays the same. I still serve him the same. I still rejoice the same. I still thank him the same. Um, and and it, it just, regardless of, of what the report is that the doctor gives me, I'm still going to, it, it, it doesn't change anything for me because I'm still going to rejoice in the same manner. I'm still going to love God in the same manner. My faith is still going to be in the same manner, you know, because my foundation is still the same. You know, I, it, it's crazy because when I, you know, when I did have like the, the, when I had the, uh, the main surgery, I remember the brain surgery. I think it was, it took me about a month and a half and I was already back to worshiping. Remember? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and it was, it was crazy because, you know, I, I just, I wasn't going to allow sickness to keep me down. I wasn't going to allow sickness to, I wasn't going to allow it to, to, to tear my spirits down or to keep me down to keep my faith down or to any of that. I, I would, it would instead what I did, what it did, it, if anything, my spirits were lifted. I said, you know what, I'm going to get through this. It, it built my faith up and I, I got, I, I got back up and I went straight back to worshiping. And if anything, I worshiped him even more. It did something to me. 
Mm -hmm. um, I, I rejoiced more. I thanked them more. I thanked them through my trials. Um, and, and it just seemed like the more that I thanked them through my trials, you know, when they say that when your hand is diligent at giving, he takes care of all the rest. He becomes more of your, of your provider. He becomes, he, he, he is your sustainer and all when you're, when you're a diligent giver, when you're diligently doing, he, he continues to, to do what he needs to do because you're taken care of. And it's in that same manner that when you're just praising him and you're worshiping him through all your sickness, through all your pain, through all your hurt, through everything, he takes care of everything. He uplifts you. He upholds you. He he does he takes care of you through everything. Yeah. He really does. And even through that through that hard moment and even through your last moment, whether it be your moment here or whether it be through your last breath in any in any in any circumstance. But the thing is is that you never stop giving up. You don't lose faith. You don't lose hope. And like David says, you know, we do live in a fallen world. But do we, do we stop giving up? Do we give up hope? Do we give up faith? No, you don't. You fight to the last moment. The same way we fight for, we continue praying for the person we love to that last moment, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing we got to do for ourselves yeah. as well. Let me, um, again, I brought this up today at Bible study, and I, I feel like this is the missing link of, of this question. Yeah. And it goes in identity teaching, actually. <laughs> yes. Which is this. Um, when, when Jesus was beaten at the whipping post, okay, he was taken to the cross. He shed his blood on the cross. He shed his blood on the cross for our sins. So why did he have to get beaten? He could have bypassed the beaten, went to the cross, and salvation would have still been available. So why was he beaten? And that's the thing that people don't ask. Everything Jesus did was significant. Yeah. Everything. So why did he get beaten? Well, Isaiah 53 gives us a, a little bit of insight. It says, by his stripes. This was written six, five, 600 years before Jesus even came on this earth. Isaiah says, by his stripes, we're healed. So in other words, he paid the cost for all sickness already. So when he went to the whipping post and they whipped him, he paid the cost of sickness. Then he went to the cross and paid the cost of sin. Okay. So, you know, when you go and watch the Olympics and the person that wins the race they bring him in front of everybody, put him on the platform, and they come and they put a, a medal, a gold medal on the winner. Yeah. And everybody cheers. They cheer because he won the race or she won the race. Yeah. They deserve that reward. Well, let me tell you this. Jesus already won the race and paid for that reward. Do you realize that sickness is not against us? Look at the bigger picture. Sickness, disease, is actually the enemy mocking God. Because he can't go up to heaven. He destroys us that are here on this earth. His yeah. creation, because we're made in the, in the image of man. Yeah. And if he can't inflict pain on God, he wants to inflict pain on us. But here's the problem. Sickness is being put on something that was already paid for. Jesus, his back was ripped into pieces and shreds for our sicknesses. By his stripes, we are healed. So, do you know why? We're supposed to pray for the sick. Yes, it's to alleviate pain, praise God. Mm. But you know what? In the bigger picture, it's because God deserves that reward. Mm. <laughs> Every time we pray for somebody that's sick and they get healed, that is, some, that is putting a medal 
over the over the head of Jesus. Yes. Every time somebody gets saved, boom, he just got his reward. I feel somebody, like getting my medal and putting it over. Yeah. Somebody gets saved. That's somebody beautiful. gets healed. Demons are cast out. Each and every one of those is a reward to him. So you know how um, that verse that says that every time one sinner repents, all of heaven rejoices. Yes. Okay. I'm going to tell you something, guys. And... and they're not cheering for you. When you got saved and people say, all of heaven rejoices. You know, maybe a little bit for you. I'll give you that. <laughs> but this is really the answer. The reason all of heaven rejoices when one soul repents is because Jesus finally got a reward that he paid for 2,000 years ago. The cheering, my friend, is not for you. It's for him because he got his reward he deserved. So, when somebody is sick, it is not even about that person if they're faithless or have faith or in the flesh or not in the flesh. The fact is this. It says, by his stripes. It doesn't say his stripes. By his stripes, those that have a whole lot of faith aren't in the flesh and are obedient are healed. It says, by his stripes, we are healed. In other words, he took the lashes for the obedient and the disobedient for those in the flesh and those not in the flesh. For those, uh, what was the other reason? Of, of faith and those of little faith. Yeah. The fact is this, regardless of where you stand or where the person stands, Jesus deserves his reward. Yes, he does. Regardless of those things. So we need to get our mind off of that. Don't come to people and be like, oh, I'm going to pray for sickness, but you got to have more faith or you got to quit doing this. Or you got to quit doing that. No, God's power has already paid for that. Jesus, he, he already gave us back to that. So now now we need to operate in this thing of laying hands on the sick, Lord, and you're yes. going to recover them. Yes. And, and, if, and if they don't recover, at least you did your part. Yes. If God sends 100 people to me, and I pray for all of them to get healed, and none of them get healed, someday I'm going to stand before the Lord, and he's going to say, did you lay hands on the hundred that I told you, that I sent to you? I'd be like, yeah, Lord, uh, but none of them got healed. He's like, that's not the point. You were obedient. You were obedient. You laid yes. hands on them because I'm the one that recovers, not you, David. So we got to do our part. Don't try to justify if the person gets healed, doesn't get healed, whatever. Just do your part, which is lay hands on the sick. Command that sickness to come out. Sometimes we just got to do what he asks of us. Yeah. And not worry what he's... That's not his worry business. about what he's doing, but just do what he asks of us and do what we're mandated to do. A lot of the times we're too busy. We're, try, we're too busy trying to figure, figure out what it is that he's doing than trying to, you know, just do what it is that he's, what he wants us to do. And sometimes we need to just just do what he wants us to do, guys, and mm -hmm. let him do what he needs to do through us. Let's just be the vessel, yeah. you know? Let him be the one who who operates the, the machinery, you yeah. know? Let him be the operator, and let's be the tool, and let him do what he needs to do through us. Yeah. And another point is is you can't you can't um say if you pray for somebody and they don't get healed or get better you can't say well that person must be in the flesh that person must be disobedient that person must um, who are we to say how much faith did lazarus have <laughs> lazarus was dead <laughs> so when he rose had nothing to do with his faith had nothing to do with his he was dead yeah had nothing to do with it you know, so we have to be careful. I have prayed for Christians that get healed. I've prayed for Christians that don't get healed. I've prayed for non-believers that don't get healed. I've prayed for non-believers that do get healed. Matter of fact, more non-believers get healed than Christians mm -hmm. that I have seen personally. I remember seeing this young girl. I don't want to mean to take long. I remember this young girl came in, lived in a homosexual lifestyle, was not a Christian. She came to the church. And she came up to, at the altar call, and, and she was crying. She was afraid. Apparently, she had a, 
uh, what is it called? The metal hip or uh, hip something? Hip replacement. Hip replacement was metal. And it had moved or shifted, and she was scared to see her doctor because she knew that they would have to reset it. And she was afraid because she had said when they did it, she didn't walk for weeks. And she mm -hmm. was afraid of that. Right? This is this is a, a lesbian girl, not a Christian. And uh, because I didn't want to put my hand on her hip because it, it's a woman, I remember calling a woman and I said from the church and I said can you put your I said can you show her where where it hurts so that sister put her hand there and I prayed and it was crazy because the the metal started rattling and it shifted back into place I didn't know that but <laughs> they looked at each other and they freaked out because they both felt that metal shift wow somebody would say like, well, why did God heal her? She was living a certain lifestyle. She was this or that. Why? Because you know what? That reward belonged to Jesus. To Jesus, yes. Because he had already paid for that. And that was his precious daughter, yes. So we can we can tell you story after story after story of this stuff, you know, yeah. but uh, that's for different time, different place. You know, I just sharing that to, to make my point, you know, so... Is that it? Well, yeah, I just, we wanted to make sure that we um, answered this question. Hopefully we know. answered it, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, guys, I know it's short and sweet, but we wanted to make sure that we answered this question. And um, we pray that it was, a, it was a, a good answer for you, sis. Yeah. Naomi, so, Sister Naomi. So um, we will see you Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, California time. I will be preaching about the glory of the Lord coming. I'm really excited. Oh, I was going to do this effect. About the gl glory of the oh, Lord coming. David. Oh, my God. He just blinded me. That was the glory of God passing by. Honey, that was really... Oh. Uh... <laughs> Oh my God, my eyes, I really can't, like seriously, I can't see. Do your peepers hurt? My peepers really hurt. Yours hurt too, huh? <laughs> I can tell that yours hurt. I saw it with my own two, two peepers. peepers. Anyways, um, I do want to thank, uh, I want to thank uh, the brother, the sisters, are they from... Are they from uh, Arizona or I have Ohio? No idea they who you're sent about. they sent us something for um, for the van or something. No, they're from Portland. Oh, from Portland. Okay, but thank you. Anyways, um, we Isaac weren't... and his wife. Yeah, Isaac. Thank you so much for the contribution towards the van. I know that we weren't really picking anything up for um, the van or anything like that, but. We did actually find um, something, and we want to go take a look at one. Well, they didn't answer me, but it was a 15-passenger van. 18. 18. Yeah, yeah. we found we found an 18-passenger van, and we're gonna we're trying to get a hold of somebody. They answered us the first time, and we're gonna take a look at it. We're gonna go look at it. I'm gonna try to go look at it if they answer us. Mm -hmm. um, but we did find one locally here, guys, and. Yeah. It's not too bad in price, so we're going to go take a look at it. So just keep that in prayer. Yeah, um, it's, it's literally it, what's in Tracy, where it, I'm yeah, from. Yeah, it's in Tracy. And um, I asked if it was still available. The person said yes. And I said, can I get pictures of the inside? It was a bunch of, a lot of pictures of the outside. I wanted to see the inside. I wanted to see the engine. Um, and then I wanted to go see it. Yeah, so you know? we're hoping to take David's uh, dad with us, you know, because he's, you know. He lives in Tracy. He lives in Tracy. He me does mechanical work and stuff. So maybe we can take him to go take a look at it with us. Mm -hmm. But keep that in prayer because if so, then it actually looks, you know, really nice from the outside and stuff. And we're hoping that that can mm -hmm. be the one. So. Or, or something else pops up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I did want to thank Sister Christy. Yes. You know, Sister Christy, you had offered an explorer and and man, it's so far it would probably cost so much to go and bring it than it would to just buy something, but man, your your heart behind I it. I know. Thank, Thank you. you sis. Thank you so much, your heart behind it. That is that is a blessing. 
I want to go jump on your little on your little things and go what go on her little um, quads and go oh. run around your little area over there with you though. I want to go hang out with you, sis. Like seriously, we we need to go hang out with Christy. So we're gonna we're soon we're gonna watch. It's gonna happen, sis. I really want to meet you in person. Um, you're you're one of the sisters that. From the beginning, you have, you know, been around since we started our devotionals mm -hmm. and everything. And I know that we talked to you personally from the beginning. And I really look forward to meeting you someday soon. So I pray that that happens. And maybe we can get on that Jeep and go run around your little, that whole little area, your little land over there. It'd be really nice. But thank you. I want to thank you for, for doing that. So, you All right. ready? All right, guys. Yeah. We love you guys. Have a blessed, blessed day. Enjoy your coffee. We'll see you guys on Sunday morning. Subscribe. Hit like. Leave a comment. Bye. Bye, guys.